Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. So recently in a video I mentioned when it comes to shooting with my M10P, I kind of just treat it like it's my M6 with a really, really long roll of film in it. I don't really import photos every night or every other day. I don't really review the photos on the back of the camera anyway. I just kind of shoot and don't really pay attention to the photos. And sometimes a week or two weeks will pass before I actually import the photos. Um, so today I have to import some photos because there are a few on here that I really, really want to see. And uh, I thought it would be fun to just import the photos together, kind of get my initial first reactions as I'm looking through the photos, kind of like getting your film scans back in a way, which like seven rolls of HP5 just landed at the darkroom yesterday, so super excited to see those. But for today, we're going to go ahead and just look through some photos here, maybe pick out a few favorites and edit them together. That way you guys can see the whole process from start to finish. First thing I'm going to do is make a new folder and we're just going to call this uh, 92520M10P. Uh, sometimes I will divide up my personal files through like chronological order and just sort by date. It works for me, that probably doesn't work for everybody, but when it comes to like most personal work, if I can sort things by date, I usually have a good enough idea of what month that was in, and then from there it's pretty simple for me to sort through it. I'm sure there are much more efficient ways to stay organized, but this is what works for me. And then from there, we're just gonna go ahead and grab all of the photos on this SD card, 493 photos. And I just now realized that I never fixed the date when I got this camera, so the dates on these are way off. But even just going off of those dates there, uh, even though they're incorrect, we can still kind of go off of that June 13th all the way to July 8th. So just a little bit less than a month, 493 photos, in terms of like rolls of film, that's probably about accurate in terms of how many rolls of film or how many photos on film I would be shooting, which I did just send off like seven rolls. So that on top of this, that's a lot of photos. So that's imported from here. I would normally go ahead and just automatically back this up on a couple of different drives. Every time I buy hard drives, I buy two, so I have redundant copies. And then I also export things to the cloud as well. So a lot of different backups there. Make sure you're doing that. Go ahead and make a second folder here called edits. Any photo that I see that I'd like to edit in this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and click, hold in option and then drag it over. That way it doesn't move the file, but it'll make a copy over. That way I can use just that folder, import that into Lightroom and we can kind of work through some edits. Got a lot of stuff from the backyard. Obviously, I'm gonna wanna keep and sort through all of these. This photo of Nora and Elliot on the swing set in the backyard. I actually did send this one to my phone and uh, just edited it on Lightroom Mobile and threw it up on Instagram that night. Uh, I just love it because that's Nora just being Nora, not really using the swing like you would expect. And uh, just Elliot's little legs back there in the background where he's kind of hidden by the slide. Just a fun little photo. I like the way their legs were there kind of playing off of each other. and. Uh, uh, just a different kind of weird curious photo taker watching over the office let's go ahead and throw that in there Elliot and baby Yoda always takes that thing everywhere I had to convince him to let me cut his hair in order to get that baby Yoda so if you have seen uh, some past photos of mine you know some things never change Elliot hanging out in the office with me after preschool, just getting some work done, some random snapshots around town. Pretty much every morning I'll go get my coffee, we'll come here to the office, drop my stuff off, and then me and Taker will just go on a walk and uh, get him started for the day and I'll just bring my camera and my coffee and uh, just enjoy the quiet morning. It's been super, super nice to start each day like that. Definitely curious about a couple of these. This was an intersection that I shot a photo for uh, in social distancing, but I just love when the light is just bouncing off of the tar lines and off of the asphalt like that. Uh, really, really high contrast situation. So I was curious to see how these would look in uh, like a nice high contrast black and white edit. Some random car, have no idea what it is. So if you're curious, I'm sorry, maybe you can tell me. Not a car guy, but it does look rad. Don't remember some of these. I remember this particular afternoon, Molly and I went on a walk and I don't remember taking these photos specifically. 
it's interesting when I see some of these photos because I see them and I'm like, I don't see what I apparently saw that day. I know this feels like nothing, but I kind of like this here. I like the shadow on the street kind of mirroring this part of this tree, like hanging down right in front of me. I have no idea why I kind of like this. I, and it, I don't know, maybe I don't like it. I'm just kind of curious about it. So I'm gonna, yeah, we're gonna throw that one on there. I love shooting on 4th Street, which is actually just right by my office. And I just love the, the brick road and some of the old houses there. I love walking there and just shooting different photos. Kinda like the color palette in this one. We'll give that a shot. Shooting into some old buildings, some different kind of options there. One focused on the wall behind it, one focused on the door. Um, I need to straighten this one out, but I actually like the focus on the background rather than on the lock. So yeah, we're gonna go with that one. I don't know which one of these I like. Yeah, we're gonna run this one. Took Nora to a playground the other day. Uh, Elliot was in preschool and she was off for the day, so took her to this playground. There was nobody there and uh, just had some good like one-on-one -on -one time. It was nice. I went to get a photo of her as she was like walking towards the playground, kind of further in the distance, and she just stopped right there and was waiting for me. She wasn't gonna take another step without me. And obviously I'm biased, but I was excited to see a lot of these because it was just her in this big playground by herself. Nobody else was around. And uh, she's just always like in her own world and doing her own thing. So it was like visually, it was just, that's, that's her. Started shooting some photos, kind of playing like with this little jungle gym and shooting through the big circles in it. Trying to like subframe her within there, but I couldn't get the right angle from this side and I didn't like everything behind her there. That was just kind of distracting. I wanted something a little less distracting, so I jumped over to the other side and that worked much better. Uh, I really loved these, this kind of big circle filling most of the frame there. And she was just bouncing back and forth in this thing, so I shot a bunch of photos as she was swinging just to try and get her at like a good kind of harsh and find angle. Felt like that would look more visually interesting than just, you know, her standing straight up. Although I do love her expression in the photo where she's just standing there, but I think her like doing the motion there, I feel like that kind of adds to it. I'm gonna throw that one in there as well. Just a fun kind of abstract one here with the shallow depth of field and uh, just focusing on the shapes there. I really just shot this one because I thought it might make a nice uh, iPhone wallpaper. <laughs> Couple photos of the smokestack on my way home. Uh, I was at a stoplight right there and just rolled down the window and shot a couple photos. Shout out to Nathan on that. Walked into the backyard and saw the kids had taken these off the gutters because they thought they would make nice robot arms. So there you go. Me and Taker also met Molly and the kids yesterday downtown. Uh, surprised them when she went to go pick up Elliot from preschool. And we went over there and just took a walk and uh, Elliot was walking Taker for the first time. So he was having a blast. Obviously there's a ton of photos there, mostly a lot of just like personal family kind of snapshots, but I went ahead and grabbed a few photos. Let's throw these into Lightroom and uh, see what we can do with them. Another thing people don't do very often is make new Lightroom catalogs. Um, if you are editing a ton of different photos on a regular basis, this is a really good way to keep everything organized. Sometimes a single Lightroom catalog can have thousands or tens of thousands of photos and it can be a little bit of a headache to sort through everything. Anytime I have a new shoot or a wedding or a video project, I'm always trying to keep those files organized separately. And with Lightroom catalogs, this is really nice. I'll make a Lightroom catalog and keep the file for that catalog in the same like root folder where my raw files usually live. That way I know exactly where the files and the Lightroom catalog for that project are. So for this, I just made one Lightroom edits video because I have no idea what I'm gonna call this. And you can see I have my Lightroom catalog here in this little folder and then the rest of the files are in that folder, the root folder as well. So one thing I mentioned recently is the archetype process, these Lightroom profiles. I have a few of them saved right here. This is the Pro 400H normal exposure. So I use this one a lot. It's the normal exposure plus two. I, I think the plus two is in regards to the strength or the contrast maybe, I'm not really sure, but there are a lot. Like these are all just the Fuji, uh, the normal ones. There's another one for Fuji films that are pushed. And you can see as I kind of just like hover over everything, you get a rough preview. And uh, the nice thing about this is you can dial in the intensity. I actually like the way this one looks right here. Let's go with that. It has kind of a nice warm color to it. Um, but if I go up here to the amount, it's currently at 100 and I can dial that all the way back to zero and anywhere in between. So that way I can have like full control of the strength of this thing. But honestly, I'd probably leave it at 100. I like the way that looks. And I mean, there's tons of stuff I could do with this, but I mean, just your simple before and after, it's pretty good. 
Like I clicked one thing, I, I added that on there and I haven't changed anything else. Obviously if I wanted to, probably my go-to would be to lift it up so the shadows aren't as dark. Uh, another little tip is if you hit the J key, uh, it shows the clipping areas for your highlights and shadows. Most people probably already know this, but it's worth mentioning for those of you that don't. Drag the shadows up a little bit and you can see where it was clipping and now it's not. Um, Right there, I'm okay with his right eye going dark because, you know, he was in the shade there and he has really dark eyes, so that makes sense. But yeah, right there, raw file, there's your edit. Pretty simple, has a nice look to it. I'm gonna crop this in just to uh, make it a little bit tighter, kind of center him up and get rid of this part of the chair that was showing. And yeah, let's bring it all the way down. There we go. Really good dynamic range though. I mean, this was in direct sunlight outside on the street and uh, there's tons of information there. Looks good. That'll work for me. That's all I'm gonna do. All right, these tar shots. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with this one. This was the first photo I shot and I really liked these bright highlights right here. But on the second photo, I like that this uh, sign right here, the shadow on the street mirroring that, I like that a lot better. So I'm gonna work with this one. Straighten that up just a little bit and then Crop it in just a tiny, tiny amount just to get rid of uh, that right there. Hit the J key. You can see nothing's clipping, but it's obviously really, really dark. Um, highlights, we could pull down a little bit. Looks like I might need to clean my sensor. Got a little bit of dust right there on the sensor, so I probably shot this at like, what, 5 F8? Yeah. There we go. Now I had black and white in mind. I'm gonna pull the highlights down, but I really want a lot of these like whites in here to really, really pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the whites up. Let me get a better broad view back. And I actually want these whites to really stand out a little bit more than the sky. So there's a couple different ways we can do that. I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, one of these graduated filters here. Set that for the whites, bring the whites up, and we are gonna add this basically everywhere on the street and below. So let's bring this up here. So now, as you can see, when I affect the whites, it's only doing this bottom half of the frame, not the top. I'm okay with some of these whites clipping because uh, I really want that like high contrast, really punchy kind of look. So before, after, pretty close to what I had in mind in terms of exposure, really just trying to enhance that. Maybe pull the blacks down just a little bit. I don't want to pull them down too much. I like having just a little bit of shadow detail there. You can even see inside uh, the fluorescent lights inside of this building, which is crazy. Old car photo, let's throw this on there so you can see before, after. I found any time I use these profiles, I throw that on there and it immediately kind of darkens the whole image, but I try to underexpose most of my digital stuff anyway, just to make sure I'm not losing the highlights. So I'll bring that exposure back up just a little bit. 0.3, play around, straightening it out just a tiny bit, about right there. Maybe do like a 4.3 on this. There you go. Hop down here in the HSL slider. I'm just gonna brighten the red just a little bit. So I went from here to about right there. Nothing crazy, might actually pull the saturation down just a little bit. Yeah, right there. Before, after, pretty straightforward. This photo that I don't know why I made. There we go. So yeah, definitely darkened everything. This one, I'm okay with the shadows going completely black. I don't know why I like this photo. Maybe pull the highlights up so they really bounce off that street there on the brick. What if I did a square crop? Nope, hate that. I don't know why I like it, but I like it. Moving on to the next one. Again, I use this 400H one a lot. It's, it's a 400H, but it's pretty warm. The other one is a little bit cooler and you can see it makes the greens a little bit cooler like your typical 400H look would be. But this one, the greens are a little bit warmer and I actually kind of like that. I find myself using the other version on a lot of wedding photos where the greens are a little bit cooler. I find like that works really well with a lot of like the wedding, uh, the flowers, the bouquet, that kind of stuff. It just kind of fits that style. Whereas this, I like the warmer look a little bit more. I bring the contrast back just a little bit and kind of lift these shadows. I'm all right with the highlights where they are. Just want a little bit more shadow detail. So raw file, edit, there we go. Probably do a 4-3 on this as well. Straighten it out just a tiny, tiny bit. That looks like it feels better. You bring that up, bring it in, and 
don't want to cut out too much of the street because I like all of the shadow and light on it. Maybe about right there. That's okay. This one, I know I want to crop to a 4.3. I had that in mind when I shot this photo. I use 4.3 pretty regularly. I'm gonna go with uh, the plus two profile here. Maybe lift those shadows a little bit, pull the contrast back, and maybe bring the whites up just a tiny, tiny bit so these kind of stand out a little bit more. You can see I'm at plus 30. This is without it. Just bringing it up a little bit. Yeah, I just like the color palette there. All right, let's straighten this one up right here. Might do a square crop on this. Right there. This is the kind of stuff I'd probably shoot with my Hasselblad. I don't know what it is, but when I look at it, that's just the first thing I think of. 160S has a really interesting look. That's tough. The 160S has an interesting look and I feel like that's the most true to life out of all of them. So we're gonna go with this one. Again, there are a lot more, but these are just kind of my favorites, the ones I use regularly. There are also some really good Kodak ones, but I haven't added those to this computer yet. I have them on my iPad though. Um, I just haven't taken the time to import them. I know that's really lazy, but it's warming up just a tiny bit, but yeah, I actually kind of like this. Bring the shadows up, contrast back some. Cool, kind of like that. Now I'm kind of curious about the crop though. I might go back on that and let's see. Cause I kind of like seeing this window in the reflection, but I feel like this works well with a 4.3. Might need to straighten it even more. Damn, I was way off on this, <laughs> negative two. Let's bring that in just a little bit. Okay, yeah, that'll work. I like the colors here. Nice shot looking down Walnut Street, and I'm not gonna crop this one really. I'm just gonna straighten it out a little bit. Maybe bring the contrast back. Shadows up just a tiny bit. Nah, I'm gonna bring the shadows back down. That looks better. Looks a little pink though. Yeah, pull some magenta out. Where was it normally at? 18, bring it down to 14. That should be enough. Warm it up a tiny bit. There we go. That'll work. Definitely gonna need to pull the contrast back on a lot of these. She was in direct sun for basically all of it. There, maybe bring the exposure up a little bit. Not much though. Let's copy that, run that to the next one. Just doing her own thing. Gonna crop this in. I kinda wanna keep her nice and centered there. Just crop it in a little bit tighter. There we go. Go ahead and paste those original edits I made on the first photo of her. Probably bring the exposure up a little bit and then just warm it up. And when I shot this photo, I had black and white in mind, but I don't know if that's actually how I would wanna do it. So I'm gonna go ahead, right click, uh, create virtual copy. So now we're gonna hit V, convert this one to monochrome, and let's see what we can do with a black and white edit, and then we can compare them. So if we pull the blacks down a little bit, the rope and like all of the black kind of outlining the everything, like I'm okay with losing detail there but it just needs more punch for her to stand out. And I could go in and like dodge her because you know, she's backlit there, but it's gonna probably start looking too overdone if I start doing stuff like that. I mean, that was a really minor adjustment and that alone, I'm like, that's, that's too much. If I click that on and off, I feel like that just doesn't look natural. So we're gonna go ahead and scrap that. I think the color one is definitely the one to go with. Those are just a few random photos, and uh, this is the kind of thing I do when I sit down and import all these photos. I will basically just throw everything on there, do a quick little scan through, pick out a few favorites, throw them into Lightroom, and then just, you know, kind of go from there and just play around with them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and before we wrap up, I want to take a second to pay some bills and tell you about our sponsor today, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is the best all-in-one platform for building a great-looking website, and no matter your experience with building a website, anyone can do it with Squarespace. So many different templates to choose from, and everything is customizable, so even if you're using the same template as somebody else, it can look totally different and custom just for your website. If you have any products that 
you'd like to sell, whether it be digitally or physical products. You can do that with the built-in commerce feature. Everything is really neat and organized. You can keep track of your orders, your inventory, and change things on the fly, run sales, really anything you would need to do with an online store. If you do ever have issues with your site or just need help figuring something out, Squarespace has 24-7 award-winning customer service and they're always happy to help. If you do want to try Squarespace out, you can do so for free at squarespace.com, but I can save you a little bit of money if you go to squarespace.com slash mattday. That'll get you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So I hope you guys had fun editing with me this morning. Uh, if you'd like to see more stuff like this, just kind of off the cuff, going through random photos and editing things as I go, let me know. I have no idea if you guys would enjoy this kind of thing, but here lately I'm just trying to experiment and try out different things that I haven't done before or videos I wouldn't normally do. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think, but that's it for today. I love you guys. I'll see you next time.